Hey guys, Sergeant Mrs. Spray Gunner in another episode of uh, Spray Gunner's Travel Across the Country. We're in California right now, so east, I think, northeast from the San Diego in the mountains, up the mountains, and there is laser craft shop here, uh, Gerald Strawberry. I'm uh, gonna introduce us to some laser crafting today and I uh, get some of the interesting samples for you. That's how he started. He turned into airbrushing. It's interesting. This is regular brush and you cannot achieve pretty much, that's why I say to most of the you know, uh, fine arts artists who are using this regular brush, you cannot achieve the smooth uh, transfer from one color to another. And well, this is the same idea with an airbrush. So just to give an idea what we are doing here you know what, is using airbrush and laser craft to help show us a uh, sample. But right from the, he's got a lot from the beginning, creating a piece of laser, and well, at least already keeps him busy, but here we go, here's a John. John, hey, we got, a, we got you on camera. If you don't mind, no. and show you shop here. So we have two locations. I'm going to be doing laser craft here and the painting actually in the uh, little room right there behind this corner. Yes, I can show you today what I've learned about uh, creating uh, what's called a sunburst. It takes us just a few minutes to do it, but it makes a much bigger impact if I show you the sunburst in the context of a uh, a piece of leather art. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a very, uh, a very easy to create uh, sheath for a pocket knife, and we're going to take it through from start to finish. And, and I've got several uh, steps along the way that I've already prepared in advance because there's some intermediate steps where we need to let things dry and set up, so we don't need to spend time doing that. So let's step over here. This is our piece of leather that we're going to work with. And uh, this is called a clicker press. So I, I turn it on, and this is going to be the shape of our knife sheath. There's one piece. Much easier than cutting it out by hand. Now we have the two parts of our knife sheath, the front and the back. Elisa was asking me questions about all of these tools that are on the table. And so now I'm about to show her and all of the rest of our audience um, what these tools are for. So one of the things we do in leather, we wet it because uh, it's much easier to make an impression that lasts. Oh, I, I missed a paste, didn't I? I don't think it'll hurt us too much. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a uh, a stitching groove. Okay, so this is the outline of where we're going to stitch from later on, much later on actually. We're going to do our artwork inside this piece. This out here uh, is where the belt loops and so forth will be. I'm going to and stamp all the way around our pattern here. So uh, I'm going to start and then I'm going to suggest we turn the camera off while I finish so people don't need, they don't need to watch me uh, go all the way around this. You can spit it up. Yeah, okay. Go. This is called a maker's stamp. That's not the one I want. And I have to hit this a bunch of times. The fact that it's stuck to it tells me I got a good impression. Ooh. That's my maker's stamp. Okay. So now we're going to adjourn to my studio next door and I'm going to put a, uh, a sunburst here in the middle. Just, it'll, it'll look very much like that. And the magic of the airbrush, and I, and I mean that sincerely, the magic of the airbrush is that I can put small amounts of dye on a, on a piece I can put so little amount of dye you can't even see it. And I can build it up and control it. And it's, I've never found anything like the airbrush to be able to control how dye goes on to the leather. And I, um, it's, it's, 
Uh, if I have a mission, it's to help leather crafters understand that, um, that they, uh, they can dye the leather in much easier ways than they've been accustomed to. While I'm, before I forget, I'm gonna... I used to, uh, when I was putting dye on leather, um, I used to say there's two colors, dark and darker. I could never get a lighter shade, and I, I know I know you can do it with dry brushing techniques and things of that nature, but um, remember I was telling you we were going to use that tool? Yeah. That's called a French edger. I have no idea why. That's just what they call it, so that's what we'll call it. Now, what that will do, that's where the knife will go into the sheath, and that'll just create that opening a little better, and, and I do that before I've... Um... So, let's go next door. Putting color on leather is just one of the things we do. You've seen me already, how I've taken several steps to get the project uh, along at its, this level. Um, if an airbrush is too difficult to get out and put away, you just don't do it. Yeah. And so the ease of cleanup has been very, very important to me. And I've, I've, uh, I've used the uh, Harder and Steenbeck line a lot. I like them a lot. In fact, it's it's sort of my go-to. But they're one, for, of, they're one of the easiest to clean. Pardon? Yeah, so they're one of the easiest to clean because they have the large nozzle piece. You can just easily to disassemble it and uh, put away. So what I've discovered, this is uh, one of the Krios, uh, yep. Mr. Hobby, the... 289. 289. Point three. So I'm going to ask you a question, and I guess I'm asking on camera so you can tell everybody what your answer is. This has a very tiny little nozzle. Yeah. I find because there is so little pigment in leather dye mm -hmm. that I can, I can simply flush this with alcohol because these dyes are all alcohol based. And I, 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 rather than taking the time to take that tiny little nozzle off, I just push a lot of solvent through it and call that good. That works most of the time. So you can, you can use this technique um, just pretty much every day use if you, you know, clean airbrush daily. Sometimes, however, because it's still small, areas can be building up the pigment, dry pigment. If you feel like airbrush is not what it used to be, you still have to take it apart and you know, do the deep cleaning. But I, I, yeah, especially this small nozzle, we never recommend to take it apart after each use. Uh, so it's okay to just yeah. flush it with alcohol. And if you leave some alcohol inside as well, it's uh, another way to preserve it. And what I, what I find myself doing is, um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll flush it out as good as I can, and then uh, I'll pull the needle mm -hmm. and uh, wipe the needle down. And if the needle's coming out fairly clean as a result of flushing, uh, it, it yeah. tells me there's not a lot of buildup. Uh, yeah, that's the right assumption, yes. But okay. uh, but I've I've really liked that, and I um, anyway, it's I'm I'm still in a discovery mode with. With airbrushing, so yeah, there's uh, two two for me. It's like two different approaches. This is German airbrush, like you mentioned, Hard and Steinbeck. They have their own kind of approach. They have the interchangeable parts. They have the large nozzle uh, size, and the whole airbrush is kind of like you can you know exactly. if, if you, you, you did a different model from them. So you have like Ultra, which is really basic, and have Infinity. Most of the parts are going to be inter interchangeable. What is the largest nozzle that uh, with Harder and Steinbeck? Point six. Point six. Yes. I, I probably need to acquire one of those. I, I've come across a time or two when it would have been helpful. Yeah, and, and Japanese airbrushes, like in the, the Creos, they have different approach. So they're more of the, because yeah, as I mentioned, 0. 0.6 for hardened stainless, so it can go for 0. 0.15, 0. 0.2, 0. 0.4, 0. 0.6. We have four nozzles for one airbrush, which right. transfers completely. For Japanese, you pretty much got airbrush for the job. So have a 0. 0.3 here, that's it. That's you know, your airbrush, you're not going to be able to change it and that's why the nozzle size is so small right? because they're not made for constantly changing those and uh, you know. It, it seems like the 0.6 would be if you're trying to put uh, dye over a larger area, mm -hmm. that that would be uh, a reason to use the 0.6? Yeah, either 0.6 on your existing airbrush, yeah, so uh, we have the PS290 which has fan air cap, it's going to open the, the pattern so it's not going to be round, it's going to be like a little spray gun. Oh, that's the the 
It's what? a tree trigger type PS2. Yeah, what, I, ha I I picked one of those up at the trade show. I have one in there. I haven't, okay. Yeah. I haven't yeah. used it yet. So yeah, that's for wider areas as well. Okay. Sorry, folks. We uh, we had to have a technical uh, discussion here. I'm actually putting dye on there, and I bet you can hardly see it. I'll build it up, and then it'll start to show. That's for for the leather crafter. That right there is phenomenal to be able to put so little dye on a project that you can hardly see it is it's it's almost magical i got a little bit more on in the middle than i wanted to so i think we're going to wind up putting six different dye colors on here the next one after this is one uh phoebe's called this next one spanish brown and um, the reason I like to use it is the next color is going to be red and I like to get just a little bit of a transition. Oops, I didn't get the yellow out of there. That's why I did it off target. Come on, there we go. I've just created a bit of a shadow outline. The next color is, uh, and where they come up with all these names, I, uh, I have no idea. This one's the next one is called Moccasin Brown. I, I think uh, hopefully it comes through on camera, but you can start to see the shading effect that's going on. Um, that last one took the harshness of the red away. Okay, so we're going to go to a color that Phoebe's now called Walnut. next color is going to be chocolate. It's of all the dyes Phoebe makes, it's one of the ones I like least in terms of using it as a standalone color. But when I'm blending, it really works well. As you'll see what it's going to do to the project now. And a fair question would someone might ask, why didn't I just start with this? And I think the answer is because you can't get to this color combination if you just use this alone. One of the things I've learned from watching other leather art artists, uh, airbrush artists, is to always keep the air on. One of the nice things about these dyes is they dry very quickly. So I'm done with that part of the process. This is an airbrush that I bought a while back I found it on Amazon. It was twenty-eight dollars and fifty cents. I didn't blame you. I, I just wanted to. I wanted to see what you got for twenty-eight dollars and fifty cents. And uh, what I use it for is putting this finish on because this stuff is very thick and um, it dries quick. And if you're not careful, you can plug your needle up in your nozzle really quickly so I thought okay if I'm going to plug one up I'll do it on a okay. I'll do it on, and all I'm really yeah. I want to try to do is put finish on and it's clear in any way so and just for folks in the camera um, there's a respirator right behind John so normally he uses respirator now just a demo for you that's why we do it without mask, but yeah, uh, you get to put a protection on right. spray and stuff. Yeah. Thank you for that. Sure. You're quite right about that. Cut it. 
Oh, and I see something on the shelf. If you don't mind me grabbing it. Yes. Yeah, so you got a point seven set, one of my favorite. Oh, man. It, it's an, because? Like, you get a bed on it. Huh? It's unacceptable. You get a spider web on it. Well, that's You're gonna use it, man. It's a really yeah, nice tool. It. It's, a, it's a really nice tool. And uh, yes, point 0.7 setup, what we discussed, you know, it's even bigger than the, you get with Harden Stimic and the fan air cap gives you up to five inch pattern so you can quickly cover your saddle or whatever you're doing there. Something bigger. Yeah, it's a really good, good set. What I'm getting ready to do, there's a pair of uh, cowboy boots down on the floor down there. And uh, they, uh, I need to, they're getting kind of faded, so I'm going to dye them. That's my gift to you as, as a thank you for everything you've done. Oh, I appreciate it so much. Careful, it's very sharp. Like sharp. Should I start the next election? Not, 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 not long ago. Now it'll, the leather will, as it takes its shape. Okay. Yeah. Let's put it on. Like I say, when you complete a project like that, it, it um, somehow underscores all of the artistry that goes into it. I'm going to put my shirt on like this. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, I appreciate it really much. I uh, appreciate your business. I appreciate your little gift here. And uh, well, we're, we're here to serve you. So airbrushes, any needs, any questions, you know, we always help. Ms. Reagan are here to help. Okay. I, 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 solution. I, like I say, I've loved uh, my interaction with you—you've been—you've been wonderful to do business with, and and you—you, oh, um, you, you know, you didn't know me from a hole in the ground when we started, and so it's—it's it's been a real pleasure. And I heard you've uh, been really impressed with the cordless airbrush in the show. That's what you said. You said you have the—you ordered one already, right? The the air hose one. Yeah. So yeah, because that's that's what you saw in the show, right? When you went with Jacob. That's the most popular product. You saw it, right? The what now? This product? Yes. You play with it, yeah. Yeah, that's when I, I use one just like that at the show. Yeah, so it's really popular right now. Every show we go to, it's just selling out. And you know, the Laser Craft show we went to, sold out as well. But it's pretty much your little box with the airbrush, all ready to go on the battery power. You're familiar with it, right? Yes. I guess I'm gonna leave this with you. So have this. Pardon me. I'm gonna leave this one with you. Oh, Just thank you. A little exchange of uh, gifts. Yeah, <laughs> a mutual admiration, if you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, hope we can help you with some on go projects. I would say something. Special. Well, I, uh, uh, I will stay in touch. Um, there's there's some other shows that are coming up, and um, yeah, we'll talk about it. You guys aren't going to be watching us talking about it, but uh, anyways, thanks for checking out this video. I hope it was helpful. Uh, you see how the airbrush can change your uh, leather craft. Yeah. If you're if thank you're into you, it. thank you again, and thank you for bringing Elisa. She made all the difference today. Yeah, come here, little princess. All right, thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.